Oh, Father in heaven, I want to thank you for this morning. And please bless this study and help us to understand new things out of your word. And please help also our brothers and sisters to follow along. And please uh, bestow your blessings uh, upon us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, I've put the um, quote that we're going to read in, in the live stream from Great Controversy 308. Also, ich habe jetzt hier das Zitat, äh, was wir jetzt hier lesen werden, in der Livestream-Gruppe gepostet. I just wanted to go back to the book of Joel. I wanted to get some things from this clear in my mind. Und äh, ich wollte noch mal zum Buch Joel zurückgehen, denn ich wollte ein paar Sachen für mich selbst auch klären. Okay, so if we go to this quote in the first paragraph. Also wenn wir zu dem Zitat jetzt gehen, im ersten Absatz. It says, May the 191780 stands in history as the dark day. Since the time of Moses, no period of darkness of equal density, extent and duration has ever been recorded. The description of this event as given by eyewitnesses is but an echo of the words of the Lord recorded by the prophet Joel. 2500 years previous to their fulfillment, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Okay, so it's speaking about this this dark day of 1780, right? What happened on that day? Yeah, the, 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 the sun was at its highest height and it turned to midnight darkness, right? Die Sonne war sozusagen gerade ganz oben am Stehen und dann auf einmal wurde es mitternächtliche Finsternis. Okay, so uh, the where, where would we if we were to take that, where would we point it to and why? Wenn wir das jetzt hier nehmen, wo würden wir das hinsetzen und warum? Okay, so the, so the midnight cry and, and why? And why? Okay, and. From the 6 to 9 hours, there was midnight darkness. And if we just go to Amos chapter 8, it tells us the same thing, right? And if we go to Amos 8, it would tell us the same thing. Amos 8, verse 8 über das Ende der Gnadenzeit spricht, wenn die Plagen ausgegossen werden und diese Hungersnot über das Land kommt. But it's, it's typified by the by the, the, the midnight cry, right? Das wird vorausgeschattet durch den Mitternachtsruf. Because the midnight cry is the close of probation, it's prefiguring in this point in time, right? Denn der Mitternachtsruf ist ja eine Vorausschattung für das Ende der Gnadenzeit. Es schattet diese Zeit hier voraus. Because in verse 9 it says, and it shall come, to, lesen, ja? it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day, right? This is this dark day that it's re referring to in some ways, right? Also, das ist hier dieser dunkle Tag, auf den es in der Art und Weise Bezug nimmt. Okay, so, uh, so we can put this, this dark day. It was also prefigured 
Das ist Hogwarts Brechen, The Cross, The Sixth Earth, right? Das ist der dunkle Tag, ist auch dann vorausgeschattet durch das Kreuz, durch die sechste Stunde, wo diese Finsternis kam. Okay, and when we take our, our line here from the, the Sunday Law uh, through to the, the, the final review, uh, as in the, this would be the period of the first Sunday Law. Also wenn wir jetzt auch noch die Linie betrachten würden, hier vom Sonntagsgesetz bis zum, äh, der finalen Untersuchung. Und you see, I've put these, these things underneath. This right here would be 1833, where the stars fall from heaven. Right? Wäre das ja in dem Sinne hier das erste Sonntagsgesetz, diese Box. Und hier habe ich dann die Miller-Linie noch eingesetzt, die Box davon 1833. Okay, because we understand that all those signs that came progressively in Millerite history are all prefigured in this way point, or this way mark here, right? Wir wissen, dass all diese Zeichen, die fortschreiten dort in der Miller-Geschichte der Stadt waren, hier diesen Punkt vorausschauen. But this quote has taken us to the book of Joel, right? He's, he's preaching about the day of the Lord that's going to come, right? Aber das Zitat, was wir hier gelesen haben, das ähm, bringt uns ja zum Buch Joel. Und er verkündigt über den Tag des Herrn, der nahe ist. Ja, ja. Also der dunkle Tag markiert dann auch die Erschütterung des Himmels und der Erde. Yes, the shaking of the heavens and the earth, right? So, um, okay, give me an example. Ja, gib mir dazu noch ein weiteres Beispiel. Bei Matthäus 24 sagt dort, die Sonne soll sich verfinstern. Okay, but, but give, me a, give me a proof, why would we put it here? Das ist der Anfang der Erschütterung des Himmels und der Erde. Right, it's easier to see in the book of Luke, right? Was nach der nach der Erschütterung ist, äh, nach der Trübsal ist. Gehen wir aber zu Lukas 21, da wird das selber erzählt. Vers 25. Lesen wir Vers 25. So this is the sign that Christ told them that when they see this that to lift up their heads because the redemption was now, right? So das ist das Zeichen, was uh, sie sehen sollten, dass wenn sie all das sehen sollten, sie ihr Häupter erheben, denn ihre Erlösung ist nah. Okay, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and they shall see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Das ist 27. So here is the sign that tells them that Christ is about to come right here. Also here is the sign that uh, says Christus wird bald kommen. Okay, and on August 11, 1840, when none other than the person in Jesus Christ came down, it's marking the second coming of Christ. It's typifying it, right? Am 11. August 1840, wo ja keine geringe Person ist, Jesus Christus herunterkam, das schattet die Wiederkunft voraus. Right? Everybody following so far, right? Kann jeder so weit folgen? Okay, so, when you go back to the quote, ja, zurückgehen jetzt zum Zitat, uh, it's always, uh, this, this last sentence, it says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. So it's the last Satz from the äh, first Absatz haben wir gelesen. So this would be an agreement right here, right? The sun, the moon and the stars fall here. The, the, all this takes place before the day of the Lord. Right? Also das wäre eine Übereinstimmung hier mit dem, was wir dargelegt haben. Sonne, Mond und Sterne, passiert, also die Zeichen passieren hier, bevor der Tag des Herrn kommt. Right? Richtig. And if we had, if we had the bigger fractal above, right, we just, this marks something here, right? Sunday Law, Final Review, Sunday Law, Final Review, you have the one, two, three, four seals, the fifth seal, 
an the sixth seal, what takes place on the sixth seal. Und wenn wir jetzt noch die letzte Reformlinie darüber legen würden, hätten wir jetzt hier diese ersten vier Siegel, dann das fünfte Siegel und was passiert unter dem sechsten Siegel? Okay, so, let's, let's read on this quote. Lass uns jetzt weiter mit Zitat hier lesen. Said Christ had bidden his people watch for the signs of his advent and rejoice as they should behold the tokens of their coming king. When these things begin to come to pass, he said, then look, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Excuse me. He pointed his followers to the budding trees of spring and said, when they now shoot forth, Ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. And summer is the harvest, right? Und Sommer ist ja die Erntezeit. So likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Right? So when these things happen right here, you know that... You're about to be delivered, right? Also wenn diese Dinge hier passieren, dann weißt du, dass du kurz davor stehst, befreit zu werden. Okay. Okay, so in, in a smaller, uh, if you go to the bigger fractal, that deliverance would be right here, right? Und wenn man zum großen Fraktal kommt, dann wäre ja die Befreiung hier für die Adventisten. Okay, so just on, on, a, on, a, on a smaller sense, right, if you take this fractal here, We're going to experience that deliverance right here on a on a smaller scale. Right? Und wenn wir das jetzt auf dem kleineren Fraktal betrachten, dann würden wir hier an unserer Mitternacht jetzt diese Befreiung in einem kleineren Maße schon erfahren. Right. Richtig? Okay. Um, next paragraph. Nächster Absatz. But as the spirit of humility and devotion in the church had given place to pride and formalism, love for Christ and faith in his coming had grown cold, absorbed in worldliness and pleasure, seeking the professed people of God were blinded to the Saviour's instructions concerning the signs of his appearing. The doctrine of the second advent had been neglected. It, the scriptures relating to it were obscured by misinterpretation until it was to a great extent ignored and forgotten. Especially was this the case in the churches of America. The freedom and comfort enjoyed by all classes of society, the ambitious desire for wealth and luxury, begetting and absorbing devotion to money-making, the eager rush for popularity and power, which seemed to be within the reach of all, led men to center their interests and hopes on the things of this life, and to put far in the future that solemn day when the present order of things should pass away. So, <coughs> that history is speaking about our history, right? Und diese Geschichte spricht natürlich über unsere Geschichte. So, it's teaching us that it, in, in, when you see these signs, you have to lift up your head, right? But what, what was happening in America? Und das lehrt uns ja, dass wenn diese Zeichen hier geschehen, sollst du dein Haupt an sich erheben. Aber was ist in Amerika damals passiert? Also sie haben ihre, diese Zeichen nicht beachtet, denn ihre Verstände waren, waren in anderen Dingen äh, beschäftigt. But when you, when you, when you know that, that, that this is in, in a smaller fractal here, we, we're in that time period, it's illustrated here approaching The day of the law. Aber wenn wir das jetzt auf das kleinere Fraktal jetzt hier betrachten, dann sind wir ja in dem Sinne, was das hier ist, hier kurz davor, dass der Tag des Herrn in einem kleineren Fraktal hier stattfinden wird. Right? Richtig? So, in some sense, it's the same experience that we are, we should be recognizing the signs right here that the, the day of the Lord is Is at hand, it's upon us, right? Deswegen in einem gewissen Weise sollen wir hier die Zeichen sehen, dass der Tag des Herrn hier am Mitternacht vor uns, also dass er jetzt vor uns ist und der Tag des Herrn hier am Mitternacht sein wird. And it says here in the next paragraph, und sagt uns dann hier im nächsten Absatz, When the Savior pointed out to his followers the signs of his return, he foretold the state of backsliding that would exist just prior to his second advent. 
there would be, as in the days of Noah, the activity instead of worldly business and pleasure seeking, buying, selling, planting, building, marrying and giving in marriage, with forgetfulness of God and the future life. For those living at this time, Christ's admonition is, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness, and cares of this life, and so that day come, on, come upon you unawares. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. The condition of the church at this time is pointed out in the Saviour's words in the Revelation. Thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. And to those who refuse to arouse uh, from their careless security, the solemn warning is addressed. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. It was needful that men should be awakened to their danger, that they should be roused to prepare for the solemn events connected with the close of probation. The prophet of God declares, The day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Who shall stand when he appeareth? Who is of purer eyes than to behold evil, and cannot look on iniquity? To them that cry, My God, we know thee, yet have transgressed his covenant, and hastened after another God, hiding iniquity in their hearts, and loving the paths of unrighteousness, to these the day of the Lord is darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it. It shall come to pass at that time, saith the Lord, that I will search Jerusalem with candles, and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, The Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. <coughs> and he quotes there Isaiah 13. Right? So here Isaiah 13, verse 11. Okay, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them, their goods shall become a booty and their houses a desolation. Right? So, um, just go quickly, we, we've been here many times lately. Go to Isaiah 13. Gehen wir zu Jesaja 13. Verse 6. Verse 6. It says, How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. So when it says that the day of the Lord is at hand, where are we? When it says that the Tag des Herrn nah is, where are we? Okay, yeah, yes, because we just put those bits together from Matthew 21, uh, Luke 21, etc. Right? Also, Matthäus-Ruf, das haben wir gerade ja aus Lukas 21 und so weiter dann festgesetzt. Okay, and it says, Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. That's what we read in Luke 21, right? In Vers 7, jedes äh, Menschenherz wird schmelzen, das haben wir auch in Lukas 21 gelesen. I have a question. Yeah. Um, when we say that this man's heart feeling a for fear, in this uh, chapter would be at the day of the Lord, or uh, uh, just, when it is just, just one second, let's mm. read it for spirit, and we'll come to that point in a second. Um, it says, Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart melt, and they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them, they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth, they shall be amazed one at another, their faces shall be as flame. <coughs> Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, the sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause a light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ephraim. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth, 
shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Okay, now come back to it. Das Vers 13 haben wir gelesen. Okay, what do we see? Was sehen wir hier? Dass die Dinge dabei sind zu geschehen. But, das ist hier mit danach zu. But what what do those what's the difference there by what we've already looked at? What's the difference? What do you so there's a, there's a, a, a when you read that the, it's what is it telling us? Also wenn wir das hier lesen, was sagt uns das? Also was für einen Unterschied kann man hier sehen? Right. So now th th this is the point that I make it, right? So it says in that first paragraph, right, which is taken from Joel, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Also in dem ersten Absatz des Zitats zitiert sie ja Joel und da steht Sonne und Mond sollen zu Blut verwandelt werden, bevor der schreckliche Tag des Herrn kommt. Right? And just keep your place in Isaiah 13, go to uh, Luke 21 again. Warte, mit dem Finger in Jesaja 13, gehen wir nochmal zu Lukas 21. I, I, I've seen these discrepancies for years and never knew how to, to, to marry it up. Right? Ich habe diese scheinbaren Unterschiede schon für Jahre beobachtet, aber ich konnte nie richtig verstehen, wie man die zusammenbringt. Vers 25. Lukas 21, Vers 25. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, what things? Welche Dinge? Das heißt, the signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, right? Also achten sie die Zeichen an Sonne, Mond und Stern. And in Millerite history, the signs in the sun and the moon and the stars came prior to the coming of Christ, right? Und in der Millergeschichte gab es ja die Zeichen an Sonne, Mond und Sterne, die vor der Wiederkunft Christi kamen. Okay, and so it says that when, you, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh, right? So... Vers 28 nochmal. And he speak to them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. Vers 30. Right? Now, it mentions here, uh, behold the fig tree, right? Sagt uns ja in Vers, 9, Vers 29, siehe der Feigenbaum. So, just go to Revelation chapter 6. Gehen wir jetzt zur Offenbarung 6. Because Revelation 6, in the big fractal, puts it at the same place, right? Denn Offenbarung 6, im großen Fraktal, setzt das ja an dieselbe Stelle. Yes? Mhm. Richtig? Vers 12. Und zwar in Vers 12. 13. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. So, what does John do here in, in relation to what we just read in Luke? Bis Vers 13. Also, was tut Johannes hier in Bezug auf das, was wir in Lukas gelesen haben? You won't get it looking at him, Mark. It's written there, right? What, what, what did we just read in Luke, and we've just read in John? You've got to, so, got to look at these things. What, what is John doing with what's written in Luke? Also, was uh, tut Johannes mit dem, was Lukas gesagt hat? Ja, ja, ja. Mit dem Wegfallen der Feigen. Be, be, be a bit more clear. Of the hands. 
Okay, the shame that what's happened, which specific thing are you referring to? Also, the Erschütterung des Himmels und was genau passiert da? Yes, but what, what is it you refer to the fig tree? Aber in Bezug auf ähm, den Feigenbaum, was, was möchtest du damit sagen? Oh, okay. The fig tree is right. So, just keep your place there in Revelation. Go back to Luke, right? So, the Feigenbaum wirft seine unreifen Feigen ab, wie die, und das ist das Fallen der Sterne vom Himmel. Gehen wir zurück zu Lukas 21. So, Vers 29, right? Vers 29. He spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees, right? When they now shoot forth, what, do, what does it mean, when they shoot forth? Was bedeutet es in Vers 30, wenn sie hervorsprossen? When they bud, when the, the leaves come, right? Wenn sie uh, ja, hervorsprossen, wenn die Blätter aufkommen. And when leaves come on a fig tree, what's meant to be there? Und wenn uh, Blätter beim Feigenbaum aufkommen, was sollte es schon da sein? Fruit, right? Frucht. So, it says, Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of yourselves that summer is now nigh at hand, right? So it's not there yet, it's just ahead of us, right? It's the sign that you're looking for. Right? Also, der Sommer ist noch nicht da, aber er steht kurz bevor, das ist das Zeichen, wonach du Ausschau halten musst. And at the midnight cry, what is going to be illustrated? Und am Mitternachtsruf, was wird dort dargestellt werden? Character, all characters will be, whether you got fruit or not, right? Dein Charakter wird offenbart werden und es wird gezeigt werden, ob du Frucht hast oder eben nicht. Okay, so, and, and look at saying, when you see the fig tree with fruit on it, you know that that point is near, right? Und Lukas sagt dir, wenn du den Feigenbaum mit Frucht daran siehst, dann weißt du, dass die Wiederkunft nahe ist. But Revelation chapter 6 is, is combining this thought that, that when... That time comes, what's going to take place? Aber Offenbarung 6 verbindet diesen Gedanken und sagt, wenn diese Zeit kommt, was findet dann auch statt? The falling away, because das Wegfallen. 2 Thessalonians says, that day shall not come. Which day shall not come? In 2. Thessalonicher 2 sagt er, dieser Tag wird nicht kommen. Welcher Tag wird nicht kommen? The day of the Lord will not come unless there come a falling away first. Right? Der Tag des Herrn wird äh, nicht kommen, es sei denn, zuvor kommt dieser Abfall, dieses Wegfallen. Okay, and this is what's marked here in Revelation 6, right? Und das ist, was hier in Offenbarung 6 ja dargestellt wird. It says, because I beheld when he opened the six seal, lo, there was a great earthquake, the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she shaken of a mighty wind. Verse 12 bis 13 gelesen. So, it's this falling away that was prefigured by Satan's angels falling from heaven, right? Das ist dieses Wegfallen, das auch durch Satans Engel vorausgeschattet worden sind, als sie weggefallen sind. And just go to Revelation 12. Gehen wir dann dazu zu Offenbarung 12. So we know that Revelation 12 is also marking the midnight cry, right? Wir wissen, dass Offenbarung 12 ja auch den Mitternachtsruf darstellt. Vers 1. Vers 1. There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So it's the woman with the wedding garment on, she's demonstrating her character, right? Die Frau mit dem Hochzeitsgewand an, sie demonstriert ihren Charakter hier. And she being with child cry, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. So, what did we just see in, in those few verses? Bis Vers 3, ähm, so, bis Vers 4, was sehen wir hier in diesen ersten Versen? Two classes, right? Zwei Klassen. One that's bringing forth fruit, and the other one that's been 
cast to the ground as if fig trees cast in her untimely figs, right? Also eine Gruppe die Frucht hervorbringt und die andere wird wie unreife Feigen hinuntergestoßen. Okay, but the point that I, I, I want us to see that in Revelation 6 and also in Luke 21 it's marking the, the stars falling, the, the, the shaking of the heavens and the earth right here as the sign that you have to see before the day of the Lord. Right? Also in Offenbarung 6 und in Lukas 21 markiert also hier diese Sterne, wie sie fallen und diese Zeichen in der Sonne, Mond und Sterne als Zeichen, die du erkennen musst, bevor der Tag des Herrn kommt. But when you go to Isaiah 13, right? Aber wenn wir zu Jesaja 13 kommen, Isaiah 13 is marking the shaking of the heavens and the earth at the end. Da markiert right? Jesaja 13 das Erschüttern des Himmels und der Erde am Ende. Okay, that's what we've been been putting this in place several times, right? Ich habe das ja bereits mehrere Male an den Platz gesetzt. Because this point here, right, would be a parallel. Okay, the, for the final review here to this point right here, midnight, right? Which we had just before. Dieser Punkt hier, finale Untersuchung, ist eine Parallele dann hier zum Mitternacht. Right? Richtig. Because we've been showing you that the shake and the stars are here, they're here, they're here, and they're also at the beginning there. Right. Und wir haben ja gezeigt, dass das Erschüttern der Himmel und der Erde jetzt nicht da markiert ist, da markiert ist, da markiert ist und auch in einer Art und Weise hier. Because this is Sunday law. This is Sunday law, right? Und das ist ja das Sonntagsgesetz und das ist auch das Sonntagsgesetz. Okay, so it's, it's teaching us something, right? Also es soll uns etwas lehren. Okay, so um, go back to the, the, the quote. Gehen wir zurück zum Zitat. Okay, it says. So it's for the absatz der Prophet Jeremiah. Okay, yeah, the prophet Jeremiah, looking forward to this fearful time, exclaimed, "I am pained at my very heart. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war, destruction upon destruction is, is cried." That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and the alarm. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So he says that the, the day of the Lord itself is a day of darkness. Right? Also, it says that the Tag des Herrn selbst ein Tag der Dunkelheit ist. Okay, uh, um, I think this is the, maybe the last, no, second to last paragraph. In view of that great, absence. in view of that great day of the word of God in the most solemn and impressive language calls upon his people to arouse from their spiritual lethargy and to seek his face with repentance and humiliation. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord Coming, right? So here it says we're to blow the trumpet, sound an alarm, because the day of the Lord's coming, right? Also here sagt es, dass wir diese in die Posaune stoßen sollen und einen Alarm geben sollen, denn der Tag des Herrn kommt. But if you in the paragraph before, aber im Absatz zuvor, when we read from Zephaniah, als wir das hier gelesen haben, wo Zephaniah zitiert wird, it says that day, the day of the Lord. Is a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and the alarm. Da steht ja, dass dieser Tag, der Tag des Herrn, dann auch ein Tag der Posaune und des Alarms ist. Right? So as a trumpet and alarm that marks warning you of its coming, but the day itself is also a day of trumpet and alarm. Also es gibt also ein Tag der Posaune und des, Alar des Alarms, um dich vor diesem Tag des Herrn zu wahren, aber dann der Tag des Herrn selbst ist auch ein Tag der Posaune und des Alarms. Okay. Um, okay, so just go, go to now to the book of Joel. Gehen wir jetzt zum Buch Joel. James chapter 2. Um, Joel Kapitel 2. Okay. 
And here we see <coughs> this trumpet and alarm. And here werden wir jetzt diese Posaune und diesen Alarm finden. It says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. Also Vers 1. So where would you put this blowing of the trumpet and sounding an alarm? Also wo setzen wir jetzt dieses äh, Posaunenschall und dieses Alarm geben hin? Okay, in der Mitternacht. At the midnight cry, right? Mm. Why? Because it says the day of the Lord is nigh at hand. Right? Warum? Weil es sagt ja, der Tag des Herrn ist nah. But, but also in the previous chapter, right, in verse 5, aber auch hier im Kapitel zuvor, in Vers 5, It says, Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, for the new wine, for it's cut off from your mouth. So it's, what's it marking right there? Was markiert das hier in Vers 5? Ja, es ist ein Midnight Cry, when everybody is to wake up, right? Markiert hier den Mitternachtsruf, wo alle aufwachen sollen. So it's basically, chapter 1 is giving you this warning to wake up, and then in chapter 2 it says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it's nigh at hand. Right? Also Kapitel 1 gibt uns hier dieses Gebot aufzuwachen und Kapitel 2 geht dann mit dem Posaunenschall und dem Alarm einher. So, you have to blow a trumpet and alarm, right? So, es hier Posaunen und ein Alarm geben. So, if we were to take this into the smaller fractal right here, which way mark would it be here? Wenn wir das jetzt in das kleine Fraktal hier übertragen, welche Wegmarke wäre es dann hier? No, 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 just, I'm asking, if we were to take this and put it here, which way mark would it be? Wenn wir das jetzt hier nehmen und hier übertragen, welche Wegmarke wäre das dann? What way mark do we mark it here? Welche Wegmarke markieren wir? 2016, right? 2016. So in 2016, were we already given a warning about midnight? In 2016 haben wir dann dich bereits eine Warnung über Mitternacht gegeben. Yes, we've been unconsciously, not fully understand these things, but nonetheless, we were given a warning telling us pointing forward to this waymark, right? Also wir haben dann nicht wirklich äh, diese Sachen damals richtig begriffen, aber Nichtsdestotrotz haben wir eine Warnung gegeben über das, was am Bitte noch kommen soll. Okay. And it says here the same as what we uh, what we read written by Zephaniah. Und hier ist dann letztendlich dasselbe niedergeschrieben wie Zephaniah. It says a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Right? Vers 2. So, it, it's, it's talking about this fearful event that's going to happen here, that's been prefigured here. Right? Das spricht über dieses furchtsame Ereignis, was dann ganz am Ende passieren wird, was hier am Mitternacht vorausgeschaltet worden ist. Okay, and it's talking about this This great people that's going to, to come up at that time. Right? Das spricht hier über dieses äh, mächtige Volk, was zu dieser Zeit hier auftreten wird. It says in verse 3. Sagt weiter in Vers 3. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yet nothing shall escape them. So, I mean this warning, who is it going to? Diese Warnung, an wen geht das hier? Wer wird gewarnt? Who's, who's been given this warning right here? Wer wird hier gewarnt? Ja, yes, it's God's people, right? Gottes Volk. So therefore, what is it referring to? What's the day of the Lord to God's people? Deswegen, worauf nimmt das Bezug? Was ist der Tag des Herrn für Gottes Volk? Also, was, welches Ereignis passiert What does the day of the Lord represent for God's people? Was stellt den Tag des Herrn für Gottes Volk dar? Welches Ereignis ist das? 
Destruction of Jerusalem. The destruction, right? It's the destruction of Jerusalem. Die Zerstörung Jerusalems. Okay. We know that the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of Babylon, they both represent the destruction at the end of the world, right? Wir wissen, dass die Zerstörung Jerusalems und die Zerstörung Babylons beide die Zerstörung der Welt hier am Ende der Tage markiert. Okay. So, um, now we know that the Sunday law crisis typifies the seventh last plague and this also to typify this seventh plague, right? Und wir wissen, dass die Sonntagsgesetzkrise ja die sieben letzten Plagen vorausschattet und das wäre dann die siebte Plage hier. When Christ comes at the seventh plague, everything's going to be laid desolate, right? Und wenn Christus zur siebten Plage kommt, wird ja alles verwüstet werden. Now, uh, it just says, and it says, There be a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yeah, and nothing shall escape them. And Vers 3. I know that I know that when it marks it in that last chapter of Great Controversy, when Christ comes, everything is going to be laid desolate. It says exactly the same line. Und das markiert es ja auch im Kapitel vom großen Kampf, dass wenn Christus kommt, wird alles letztendlich verwüstet werden. But here it says, um, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. As a strong people set in battle array before their face, the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. Okay, so, it's for six. what's it referring to right here? Worauf nimmt das jetzt hier Bezug? We, we misunderstood this before, but Und wir haben das ja davor nicht richtig verstanden. Okay, what's the language here? We've just been reading it. Was ist die Sprache hier, die wir gerade hier lesen können? What's the main theme that you see? It's mentioned it several times. Was ist hier der Hauptgedanke, der hier mehrfach erwähnt wird? Fire. Yeah, okay, fire, right? Feuer. How was Jerusalem destroyed? Wie wurde Jerusalem zerstört? By, by fire, right? Durch Feuer. Okay. And it's Sister White takes that and she says, not one stone shall be left upon another, right? Und Anne White benutzt das ja und sagt dann, nicht ein Stein wird auf dem anderen zurückbleiben. Okay. And we know that she likens it to great buildings that are going to be brought down, right? Und wir wissen, dass sie das vergleicht mit diesen großen Gebäuden, die niedergebracht werden. Which is also the destruction of Babylon, right? Was auch die Zerstörung Babylons ist. But the destruction of Babylon is done by a different entity than is going to destroy Jerusalem. Right? Aber die Zerstörung Babylons wird durch eine andere Macht durchgeführt werden als die Zerstörung Jerusalems. Okay. It says, uh, they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one in his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. So what's it marking right there when that takes place? It's verse 10. Also was markiert das hier, wenn das hier alles stattfindet? Okay, there's a confirmation. The shaking of the heavens and the earth is also marking the day of the Lord, right? Also, the Erschütterung des Himmels und der Erde is eine weitere Bestätigung, dass die Erschütterung des Himmels und der Erde auch den Tag des Herrn markiert. And it says, the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very strong, for he is strong that does what? Executes his work. Okay, so it's when is the execution of his work? Vers 11 haben wir gelesen, wann wird das Wort Gottes vollstreckt werden? The day of the Lord, right? Am Tag des Herrn. Comes to execute, uh, his judgment upon them, right? Er kommt und wird sein Gericht vollstrecken. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, who can abide it? Okay, so, so now comes back to the warning, right? Also jetzt geht es hier zurück zu, dem, zu der Warnung, Vers 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart, and not your garments. 
and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. So, bis Vers 13. What's the Lord about to do? Was, wo, also, was wird der Herr bald tun? Okay, no, I don't, I don't mean that. I'm, I'm on about yes, he will do that if we, if we repent, right? Also, er wird ähm, von dem Bösen ablassen, wenn wir Buße tun. But I'm asking, what, why do we need to repent? Aber warum müssen wir Buße tun? What's the Lord about to do? Was wird der Herr bald tun? He's about to bring this great army that's like an unto fire upon his church, right? Es steht kurz davor, diese große Armee, die wie Feuer verglichen wird, über seine Gemeinde zu bringen. Okay. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, uh, chamber. Of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? So, what's this, this, what's this work here in verse 17? Was ist dieses Werk hier dargestellt in Vers 17? Yes, it's an intercessory work to save the people from destruction, right? Das ist letztendlich ein Werk der Fürbitte, um das Volk vor der Zerstörung zu bewahren. Okay, and that, that work be perfected right in here, right? Und Which work? So that work would, would be okay. perfected right in here. Right? Also dieses Werk der Fürbitte ist ja dann hier vollständig oder wird hier vervollständigt werden. Okay, but uh, just just go now to verse 20. Gehen wir jetzt aber zu Vers 20. But I will remove far off you from you the the northern army, right? The northern army is Babylon and, and Rome, right? Also ich werde von euch fern tun die nördliche Armee, das ist Babylon und Rom. Okay, so now we just come down to um, verse 23. Give us one to verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain and the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Right? Okay, now. Um, Just go to, um, just go to Psalm 68. Give us Psalm 68. Halt it on your finger here. There's eight. Psalm 68, Vers 8. It says, The earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God of Israel. Right? So, this is the shaking of the heavens and the earth. But, but where is that? Is that here? Or is that here at the end? So, it's here the Erschütterung of the heavens and the earth. But is that here markiert or dort am Ende markiert? At, at the end, right? Am Ende. Because it says, Thou, O God, did send a plentiful rain whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary, right? Just verse 9. So, just keep your place there, because go back to Joel 2, right? Vielleicht ist es auch im Deutschen ein Vers versetzt, also... Vers 23. Gehen wir jetzt zurück zu Joel, lesen wir nochmal Kapitel 2, Vers 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. So the great army that he sent among us 
es ist Foreign Sex, es ist die Northern Army, right? Also die große Armee, die er unter uns sendet, ist diese vier Insekten, es ist eine nördliche Armee. Okay, would be Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and now we're down here, right? Babylon, Medo-Persia, in Griechenland, und dann sind wir hier bei Rom. So, if he receives the latter rain right here, he promises that he will remove this army that's been progressively uh, yeah, devouring God's people, right? Also, wenn du hier den Spätring am Ende erhältst, dann verspricht er, dass er letztendlich diese Armee hier beseitigen wird, die dich fortschreitend hier zer zerfressen hat. So, just go back to Psalm 68, right? Zurück zu Psalm 68. Vers 11. Vers 11. It says, the Lord, im Deutschen auch Vers 12 sein. The Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that published it, kings of armies that what? Flee apace, right? Es stehen hier letztendlich, das in Vers 12 oder in Vers 13, Könige sind hier hinweggeflogen. Okay, see, and that's a parallel to Joel 2, Vers 20, right? Beziehungsweise die Heere der Könige. Und das ist ja eine Parallele zu Kapitel 2, Vers 20. Behold, I will remove far off him from you the northern army, right? Siehe, ich werde von dir hinweg tun, die nördliche Armee. Okay, so you can see how that's been prefigured here by Cestius. Fleeing away, right? Wir können also sehen, wie das hier vorausgeschattet wird, indem Cestius hier hinwegflieht. Okay. Now remember, when we were looking at this in Daniel chapter 8, when you, when you come to here, what happens to Greece? Und denkt dran, wir haben das auch angeschaut in Daniel 8. Wenn wir hier hinkommen, was passiert hier mit Griechenland? The, the horn gets broken, right? Das große Horn wird hier zerbrochen. And then you have this four Horns come up. It's this worldwide league that they're going to make that's going to take its place, right? Und dann kommen ja diese vier Hörner auf. Das ist diese weltweite Verbindung hier, die dann letztendlich den Platz des großen Horns einnehmen wird. So you can see that it, it, it's, it's also when when you take, um, for instance, when you go to the the story of Moses, right? You've got these three plagues. One. Two, three, and then you've got seven plagues, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What happens at the at the third plague? Also, wenn wir hier zur Geschichte des Mose kommen, die Plagen hier, was passiert hier bei der dritten Plage? It's the finger of God, right? It's the finger Gottes. And the finger of God is the day of the Lord. Und der Finger Gottes ist der Tag des Herrn. Yes, because the finger of God is the curse, it's the judgment that's coming upon you. Right? The finger of God is ja the fluch, it's the gericht that's over you. Come. So when you, when you take these, the, the smaller fractal and the bigger fractal, right, it's showing you that the day of the Lord is at the final review, these three points here, right? Wenn wir uns also das kleinere und das größere Fraktal anschauen, dann sehen wir, der Tag des Herrn ist hier in der finalen Untersuchung markiert, okay. was dann auch hier ist. But It's showing you here by other illustrations that it's also pointed to here by, by bringing other things together, right? Das zeigt uns dann durch diese ganzen anderen Darstellungen, dass es letztendlich hier an Mitternacht auch vorausgeschattet ist. Okay, it's just teaching us the, the same thing on, on, a, on a smaller, smaller level, right? Es lehrt uns einfach genau dasselbe, einfach nur auf einer kleineren Ebene. Okay, we go back to uh, Joel. Gehen wir zurück zu Joel. Vers 25. Joel, Kapitel 2, Vers 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten the canker, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. So what's the promise there in verse 26? Was ist hier die Phrase in Vers 26? Okay, so, so where does that take your mind to then? Das bringt dich jetzt hier in die Zeit der Fülle, und wo bringt dich das dann verstandesmäßig hin? Okay, the seven years of plenty, right? Zu den sieben Jahren der Fülle. So we know that this, this, 
time of peace between the the two Sunday laws, right? And also here, this where you're going to eat plenty, right? Wissen, das ist dann hier diese Zeit des Friedens, die ja in einem großen Fraktal dann hier zwischen den beiden Sonntagsgesetzen ist, aber auch in einem kleinen Fraktal dann hier dargestellt. Und das ist die Zeit, wo du Fülle haben wirst. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, Uh, Vers 27. Vers 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is Psalm 68, right? He gives you the spirit when you are weary, right? Also in Deutsch mag es jetzt schon Kapitel 3, Vers 1 sein, je nachdem welche Versszählung ihr habt, oder ansonsten ist es noch Kapitel 2, Vers 28. Er gibt jetzt hier den Geist, genauso wie in Psalm 68, äh, als du in Mathe warst. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, uh, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord, right? Mm. The, 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 now this was this verse we read in this uh, quotes that we were reading, right? Also, jetzt haben wir bis Vers 31 von Kapitel 2 gelesen oder bis no. Vers 4 von Kapitel 3. Always used to confuse me. How is it that you see the, all those things at the day of the Lord and then come down here and it says these things are going to be before the day of the Lord, right? Das hat mich immer verwirrt, dass man ja diese ganzen Dinge wie hier beschrieben werden mit Sonne, Mond und Stern an Tag des Herrn sieht, aber dann steht es hier, das ist vor dem Tag des Herrn. Here, right? Aber in, weist sich jetzt hier in dem Kapitel zurück auf diesen Punkt. Because when you just go to verse 31, right? Dann wenn wir Vers 31 nochmal anschauen. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So When are you to call on the Lord? Also Vers 32 oder Vers 5. Um, wann sollst du den Herrn anrufen? When you see these signs. Right? Wenn du diese Zeichen hier siehst. That's when you're to cry unto him, you're to call on him, right? And he will deliver you here in this point, right? Das ist, wenn du den Herrn anrufen musst und anflehen musst, damit er dich hier am Ende dann befreien kann. Okay. Okay. So, um, At least for me, the, the second chapter of Joel is, is a bit clearer, right? Zumindest für mich ist jetzt das zweite Kapitel von Joel ein wenig klarer geworden. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll close on that thought. I have some thoughts I want to clear up in chapter one, but I have to think about it first. Also, wir können jetzt mit den Gedanken abschließen für heute Morgen. Und ich habe auch noch ein paar Gedanken über Kapitel 1, aber... Da möchte ich erst mal nochmal selbst drauf schauen. Okay, but just the, the, the last thought that I just want to leave you with is that if we understand that correctly, which I, I believe that we do. Und der letzten Gedanke, mit dem ich euch dann auch ähm, weggehen lassen möchte, ist, wenn wir das richtig verstehen hier, und das glaube ich, dass wir das tun. What is the work that we should be doing right now? Was ist dann das Werk, was wir jetzt tun sollten? We are sighing and crying, weeping, calling on the name of the Lord rending our hearts and making sure that we've got no idols in there before this point comes right which is typifying this point wir müssen äh, den herrn anrufen weinen und klagen vor dem herrn unser herzen zerreißen damit wir sicherstellen können dass wir keinen götzen haben bevor der herr dann letztendlich dann kommt beziehungsweise das im typus dann hier right richtig Or think about these things. God, God's word is not there for just us to brush over it. It's very important that we understand that. Right? Und wir müssen wirklich darüber nachdenken, denn Gottes Wort ist ja nicht etwas, wo man einfach leichtfertig drüber hinweggehen kann, sondern das bedeutet etwas für uns und es ist sehr wichtig, dass wir es beachten. Okay, let's close. With Lass uns mit Gebet abschließen. Thank you, 
danke, Vater im Himmel, dass du uns hinausführst auf diese grüne Weide. Danke, dass du es deutlich machst, zwar jeden Schritt, den wir zu befolgen haben. Ich möchte dich bitten, Herr, dass du unseren Verstand immer weiter öffnest, damit wir diese Dinge in unserem Verständnis auch wirklich ergreifen können. Lord, I also pray that we can lay down all our sins and our shortcomings. Ich möchte auch beten, dass du uns hilfst, dass wir all unsere Sünden und unser zu kurz kommen ablegen können. And that we can reach the seal which is before us. Und dass wir das Siegel erreichen, das vor uns liegt. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.